High winds rushed the Palouse last night, causing lots of damage and power outages. And many people over Washington experienced extreme flooding. We'll tell you the affected areas next on Mero News 8. From the Northwest Public Broadcasting Studios on the campus of Washington State University, this is Mero News 8. Good evening, I'm Sana Porter. And I'm Madeline Donaldson. Welcome to Mero News 8. Last night, a windstorm knocked out power across Whitman County, even damaging a few buildings. According to Avista, 14 separate power outages in Pullman and four in Moscow shut down power for about 1,000 residents. On your screen now is Pullman City Hall in, after wind gusts tore off a, a portion of its roof. Tree limbs and power lines also came down last night, so with high winds being another possibility for tonight, please be cautious if you decide to go outside. After heavy rains and strong winds made their way across Washington State yesterday, many people are still left without power. One city that was hit extremely hard by the storm is Bellingham. The rains were so heavy that the city began to flood. On your screen now is a video sent to us from our friends across the state showing waters rising incredibly high outside their home, and for some, even flooding in their basements. One person is still missing after they were seen clinging to a tree in the floodwaters. Bellingham's record rainfall Sunday totaled nearly 2.8 inches, which crushed the prior daily record from 1998, which is nearly 0.9 inches. Governor Inslee has declared a severe weather state of emergency in 14 counties across Washington. As the police will soon experience severe winter weather, WSU police is reminding everyone to consider personal safety when deciding whether or not to travel to and from campus. The department advises the campus community to plan for inclement weather conditions by preparing a winter driving kit for your cars, wearing weather-appropriate clothing when outdoors, and visiting the WSU Safe Driver website, which includes important sources for safe driving information and advice for winter traveling. The Washington State Department of Transportation is warning motorists to expect snow plowing delays on highways this winter in eastern Washington due to staffing shortages. The local region, regional administrator for WSDOT says the staffing shortages are due to higher freezing furloughs because of the pandemic and Governor Inslee's vaccine mandate for most state workers. Highways will still be cleared, but response times will be slower for the roads that have lower priority. The city of Moscow is planning to pursue joint ownership of the Pullman Moscow Regional Airport. Pullman and Moscow have jointly operated the airport since 1939, yet Moscow has never been a co-owner of the airport. Both cities contribute funds to ensure the airport continues to operate, but only Pullman receives economic benefits from the airport's property. Attorney said that the city of Moscow could explore an agreement with Pullman to share this revenue as well as ownership of the airport. Whitman County officials reported 16 new local COVID-19 cases on Tuesday. On your screen, you can see that the running total is 6,014 confirmed cases in the county, along with 81 deaths and 223 hospitalizations due to COVID-19. Idaho lawmakers introduces over three dozen bills dealing with vaccinations and employee rights issues. Many of the bills are in, in reaction to Biden's administration's recent executive orders requiring all federal workers and federal contractors to be vaccinated against COVID-19. Almost half the bill is introduced on Monday, introduced on Monday would uh, prohibit mask or vaccine mandate. Three of the bills would allocate $2 million in public funding to fight federal vaccine mandates in court. According to Pullman Radio, there will be a panel discussion tonight in Moscow regarding Idaho Republican Congressman Mike Simpson's proposal for removing the four Lower Snake River dams. The panel is called Save Salmon, Invest in Community, and there has been a lot of talk surrounding the issue of wild salmon and trout numbers declining in Idaho waters. Fishing guide Roy Atkins, who works and lives in the small town of Riggins, Idaho, whose economy survives off of local fishing, has been working alongside Congressman Simpson. When we get to wild fish numbers in Idaho, we've seen steady decline since the creation of the four Lower Snake River dams, which were built to allow primarily barging in and out of the Lewiston Clarkston area in Idaho. Whatever the solution ends up being, the goal is to restore salmon and trout life in rivers like this one. The discussion will run from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. tonight at the Lata County Fairgrounds. Coming up, the Kylo Rittenhouse trial is nearing the final verdict. 
and find out if those strong winds have another wild night in store for us. We'll be right back. Days, months. Hey, I'm Jim from across the street. Years. I'd like to give you this. A lifetime. We can rush by without realizing what we're missing. We lose some of the best moments. Some that may never repeat. Come on. Or detach from people around us. Our loved ones grow used to this pattern. But it doesn't have to be that way. We have a choice to take action. It's never too late to live a full life again. Hear how many of us Vietnam veterans have managed our mental health and reconnected with our families. Visit maketheconnection.net to find out more. The fate of 18-year-old Kyle Rittenhouse, who gunned down two men and injured another during a 2020 protest, is in the hands of Wisconsin jurors, who are set to begin deliberations Tuesday morning. His trial concluded Monday after Kenosha County Assistant District Attorney James Krause had the last word in rebuttal of defense's closing arguments just before 7 p.m. Rittenhouse claimed the shooting of the two men was in self-defense. Krause says the only imminent threat that night was Rittenhouse and that he is guilty. President Biden signed a $1 trillion infrastructure bill into law, allowing an important part of his domestic spending agenda that will give billions to states and local governments to rehabilitate outdated roads, bridges, transit systems, and more. The event took place at the White House and was attended by members of Congress, including several Republicans who negotiated the bill. While the harsh weather conditions last night indeed had done lots of damages, um, Derek, how is the rest of the week looking for us? Thanks, Sona. Well, I can't guarantee that the uh, crazy weather is going to stop today. You know, we've seen some snow around town, we've seen some hail as well. We saw some grapple on campus, which is kind of like some light hail, almost like dipping dots. We also saw some pretty strong winds at 16 to 20 miles an hour. But hopefully moving towards tomorrow, things will start to get a little bit better. Highs are going to be in about the high 30s tomorrow. Uh, we're looking at a little bit less wind at 6 to 10 miles an hour. so. The wind chill shouldn't be as bad. It should feel a little bit better. Uh, but yeah, uh, looking forward to the state map uh, over in eastern Washington. Highs in the low 40s around here. Pretty cold with all that wind and everything. But as we look down south towards Yakima and Tri-Cities, I'm a little jealous. Honestly, they're getting a little more sun down there and highs in the low 50s. Kind of the same over in western Washington, looking at Olympia and Seattle. Seattle a little bit colder at 48, but they're still getting plenty of sun over there. Uh, as we're looking towards the five cast, I'll go ahead and step off so you guys can take a look at that. Uh, we're looking at highs in still the low 40s or the low 40s and the uh, high 30s. We're going to see a mix of rain and snow on Thursday and some rain on Friday. So if you're going to the football game, make sure you prepare for that. Bring a poncho or something to keep you dry. But we're looking at a little bit more sun on Saturday and Sunday over the weekend, so it should be looking a little bit better then. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Derek. One of our young Cougar stars shined at yesterday's basketball game versus UC Santa Barbara. And Jihad Woods broke a Cougar football record. Aspen Shumpert has the story coming up next in sports. Bedroom. Come on, come on. Okay, Dad. One, two, three. Ah! Dad! You saved me. Dad? Are you okay? I'm fine, dear. Your hero needs you now, and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org caregiving. 
What was expected to be WSU's first test of the season last night turned out to be another catwalk. The Cougars raced out to a 12-point lead on the UC Santa Barbara Guachos in the first seven minutes of the game and never looked back. Cruising to a 73-65 victory, it was a dominant night in the paint for F.A. Abugidi, finishing as player of the game with 18 points, 8 rebounds, and 6 blocks. Hear what his head coach Kyle Smith says about his game. You feel good. You get a little cocky over there sometimes when you see guys drive and you're like, ah, oh, block it. And he does. He reciprocates a lot. So he just, when he's energized and active, he's, he's really impressive. Uh, and doing, he's got to do what he does well all the time. The Cougars travel to Moscow, Idaho on Thursday for their only road non-conference game. That game against the Vandals will tip off at 6 p.m. Adding to their stellar core of outsides, WSU volleyball coach Jen Greeny announces the official signing of Britt Carlson from Woodby, Minnesota during the early signing period for high school students. The 6'4 outside is the first signing for the Cougs for their 2022 season. Greeny says Britt is physical, can put up a solid block, has a good arm, and can attack from both pins. All of this is not only wanted, but needed at their Pac-12 level. The WSU swimming team will be traveling to the University of Houston to swim at the Phil Hansel Invitational. This event will be over the course of three days, this Thursday the 18th through Saturday the 20th. The WSU football team suffered a tough loss against the Oregon Ducks last Saturday, but making this season a success is still well within the realm of possible. If the Cougars can manage to beat the 1-9 Arizona Wildcats on Friday night for their senior night, they'll clinch yet another uh, postseason berth. They're hoping fans will be there to cheer them on, and yes, that starts with the willingness of us students to delay staying in the bedroom at our parents' house for one extra night. And it just seems like linebacker Jihad Woods has been in Pullman forever, starting the most games as a sixth year in WCU football history. Woods broke out as a key defender in 2017 and has been lining up with WSU's first stringers ever since. Woods set the program's all-time record for career starts Saturday at Oregon when he trotted out for the 49th game, officially passing offensive linemen of 2007 to 2010 Micah Hanman. That's all I've got for sports today. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Aspen. Well, one of our own reporters got pranked so bad, he went viral. And he's here to give us his thoughts and reactions coming up next. Over the weekend, our very own reporter, Dakota Cruz, went viral, viral for getting pranked by his roommates. Dakota went to Oregon for the WSU football game, and to his surprise, he came home to his room completely covered in tinfoil. And Dakota is actually here with us right now. Dakota, how did you get pranked so bad? <laughs> yeah, well, I can't tell you guys because I just came home to a big surprise. When I left, they're all like, yeah, we're going to prank you, but I didn't think it would be that bad. So I spent all day picking tinfoil out of my clothes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, I hope you don't get pranked again like that because that was a good one. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. And if you missed anything, you can catch us on YouTube.